All right, and it's comp one, two, three, week eight, lesson eight, part five. And um, we're talking about, in chapter 14, files and streams. This is a pretty important lesson because you need to know and to understand file I.O., input and output, right? And we need to do exception handling because exception handling and file I.O. kind of go hand in hand in terms of if you read something from a file or we try and read a file that doesn't exist, it'll throw up an error, right? And I mean throw up. <laughs> Definitely, it'll crash your code. It'll do all kinds of weird things. And sometimes you want to be able to catch that instance before those kinds of things can occur. OK, so let's talk about this uh, files and streams uh, kind of thing. Neat stuff. All right, so we're going to talk about this file and directory structure. Um, so again, the difference between temporary storage, again, would be your, not your kind of volatile memory. Your RAM, if you will, random access memory. That's an old term, but I, I, I knew way back in the day, like, you know, uh, all kinds of decades ago, <laughs> I learned about RAM and what that meant. Again, temporary storage that, that kind of uh, is, is almost like a working storage, if you will, that's working for your machine. And then, of course, permanent storage would be on some kind of disk for now. In the future, it may not be disk. It might be a crystal. Maybe it's going to be in your own body. Who knows? But uh, for now, it's on something called a disk, right? And usually it's the hard disk. Uh, back in the day, we had tape drives. We had uh, all kinds of other hardware that stored um, information. Um, we had uh, hard disk drives that actually had all kinds of, um, uh, they were quite large. For, for 25 megabytes, uh, my hard drive was probably the size of my laptop, right? And about four times as thick, right? 25 megabytes now is like the size of a small app. <laughs> right, so you can imagine that if all you have on your hard drive is that 25 megabytes, um, it's not a lot of space. And it was slow as molasses. If you wanted to fill a 25 megabyte hard drive, it would take you hours. Like literally, that's how big and bad it was. But nowadays, uh, we're, we're into this, um, these solid state drives that can uh, kind of boot up your machine within seconds. You know, 10 seconds, you're, you're up and running. Um, to me, that's like we've come leaps and bounds, and we're going to continue to do that, right? But this non-volatile storage, so to speak, and again, I'm, I'm speaking at a very high level because some people would claim that SSDs aren't exactly non-volatile because eventually, they're, you know, there's going to be you're going to continue to lose um, storage capacity as the SSD ages, and maybe we'll talk about that in another topic another day. But there's some controversy about how non-volatile it is. But definitely more non-volatile than RAM, <laughs> or your memory that's your, that you're working with. So what we want to do is we want to store our text files, or our two types of files, basically text files, um, you know, as an example, and binary files. All right, so different kinds of, of, uh, of files. Right, a text file obviously has text that it stores on it, and usually in ASCII format or Unicode characters. Um, and again, we can read it in plain in a plain text editor, like uh, if you use um, Sublime on, on the Mac or the PC, uh, edit your text editor, right? Um, all kinds of other possibilities. Um, Notepad++, all those kind of things, text editors, Notepad. Um, binary files, of course, they store things like music, software, images, all those things, and you can read those things too with C Sharp. So reading and writing files are like super, super important, right? A couple of things to note, and this is kind of like, again, we have to understand files before we use them because once I start getting into file reading and writing, you're going to go, I don't get it, <laughs> right? So that's why we're talking about these things. Again, on a disk, a file takes up space. But the way we think about a spa uh, the space on a disk being all together is incorrect. A lot of times what we have is piece parts of the files all over the disk and they're linked together, right? That's how it happens. Uh, more modern file storage systems obviously try and put those files as close together as possible so that way they're not scattered or fragmented, right? When we write to the file, what we do is we store data to the file, right? And on some kind of device. Usually it's something to do with, um, you know, a hard drive or something. Now again, we're talking about store local storage here, something on your hard drive. We're not talking about cloud storage. That's a whole different thing altogether, right? When we're reading from a file, what we're doing is we're copying data. So let's think about that. So writing to a file, we're sending data to it. 
reading from it, we copy data. We don't actually remove data. That's a different. This this is a different thing we're talking about. Um, and again, this is very basic, but we store files in folders or directories, right? So they're almost like containers to hold our files. So this is just a review. We all know these things. This is not. This is like computer hardware 101. If you don't know this stuff, and you're already doing programming too, we get problems, right? But the reason why I wanted to go into it, and I thought about skipping it. Ah, oh, these guys know. Well, here's why I'm saying you, maybe you don't know. Because when we start accessing stuff in our files and folders and directories, um, you know, what ends up happening is we have to use different methods in order for us to do that. That's why it's, I'm mentioning it to you. Okay, so here's a path. Uh, the other thing we have to talk about is a path to the file. In this particular case, it's a path on your C, on your C drive, your hard drive. Your main drive is usually C on most, most uh, systems, right? This is where your uh, operating system is stored. You can also have a path to a data file in another drive, a D drive, an E drive, an F drive, a network drive. All those kinds of things um, are, are good or, or uh, valid paths. Here's an example of the drive letter, where it is and which folder, another subfolder, and then the actual data, right? So again, we have two built-in classes, right, named file and directory. Those are actually class names, so keywords now for our file input and output, okay? Come up, a couple things we can do with those classes is um, access information about the files, do they exist, right? And create, delete, and move files. Those kinds of things, those operations we can do with these file and directory classes, okay? So here's our file class, and again, we it usually comes from this system.io namespace, right? Now, if you notice, if we go back to this, I'm going to create a new file for us today. So I'm going to go new project, and I'm going to go right into Visual C Sharp here, console application, and we're going to call this comp123 lesson 8 part 2, right? Lesson 8 part 2. And I'm just going to create a new uh, GitHub repository for us, just to, in order for us to follow along. Man, crazy repository. So comp one two three lesson eight part two. Here's lesson eight part two. I'm creating the repository. I'm grabbing the URI, copying it, going back into Visual Studio, uh, going into Team Explorer, pressing home, going to changes, um, and I'll do the same thing. Created base vs C sharp project, that's all it is, and then from there I'm going to go to home and go to unsync commits and throw in my URI for GitHub and press publish. Now we're good. Okay, so this is where we're going to work. If you notice here, and I'm just going to kind of zoom in here for you guys to see, do we see a system.io over here? The answer is not. We do not see a system.io. And my question to you would be, and before we actually see anything, do we need a system.io? Um, and remember what these using statements mean. What do they mean? Anybody? We're programming, right? And you have the, you have all these using statements up here. What do they mean? What do they mean? The using statements. What are these for? Do we know? They're libraries, right? I'm importing libraries, right? That's part of the C sharp, um, part of C sharp. We don't have to use every library. We don't, I don't have to kick off every library from, from C Sharp. I only want to import the libraries that I need, right? So going with that, if I was to assume that I need a, an I.O. type library, I could type the word using. And if I start typing system, and if I go I.O., if you notice, yes, there is actually an I.O. library. I could put this in if I was going to use the um, uh, input-output if I need to use input output, I mean theoretically I should use it. Although here, if you notice, it does include the system namespace, all told. So I mean it's not like I couldn't use I/O. And but what I'm doing here is when I use this, I actually call the the I/O uh, classes that are part of our subclass, uh, the, the sub namespace of the system namespace, almost like the folder structure. Remember, when you look at this namespace here, what is that anyway? It's just a container for your program. And the program is a container 
for your main method. And the main method is the container or the thing that kicks off for your entire uh, app, right? So when I call my system.io namespace and I include it inside my, my program, what I'm actually doing is including all the classes and objects that belong to that namespace. That's what I'm doing. What I'm using, when I say using, I'm actually, think about it as an import. I'm importing all the classes that are, exist in that namespace. If I don't do that, I don't have to import those things because when I import my code, theoretically I'm making my code fatter, right? Why would I make my code fat? I want to make my code as slim as possible. So that's why I only include those libraries that I need, not just because for no reason. Okay? Let's go back. So system.io is the namespace we need for this file class. Okay, so here's some um, methods for the create, and, or sorry, for the file and directory classes, and they're related, file and directory. You can use very similar things with both of them, right? For example, if I go file.create, obviously I would create my file. Um, here's file.create text would create a text file, a special type of file, right, that creates text. I can delete a file. I can check if a file exists. This is a really good function to, to use. I want to always check that my file exists, right, <clears throat> before I load it. Or um, maybe if I'm going to try and create it, I should check that it exists first. Right? Because if it doesn't exist, then I'll create it. If I try and create something that already exists, it could pose a problem, right? Um, <clears throat> I can also get things like creation time, when the actual file was created. And when's the last time the file was accessed? And when's the last time the file was written to? Right? And so on. And also, I can move a file to a specific location from one folder to another. Right? So these are all methods that exist within the file and directory classes. And I think these are important methods to understand and remember, right, when we're doing file input output. Actually, they're, if you think about it, quite easy. It's not like we don't know how to create or whatever. I wish they had more generic names, you know, for creation and so on, but they're pretty good. And I'll tell you beforehand, when we used to do input and output and other kinds of uh, uh, code, um, there were much more complicated ways of doing so. Now, we're not talking about file streams yet. That's a whole different concept. This is just regular file access, input, output. Here's an example of, of our, our code. And if you notice, hey, hey, look, there's my, uh, my using statement, right? I need that. If I don't use that using statement, right, will it generate it for you? Maybe. So here, what I'm doing is I'm saying, here's my, um, I create a, a string, that's my file name, and I say, <clears throat> enter a file name. Okay, so I'm asking for the user for a file name. My file name is going to be a string that I'm going to read from the from uh, using the console.readline command. And then I check. I say if file.exists file name, and if you notice this file, I'm actually using the class file, right? I don't have to instantiate a new object of class file, right? It's a static class that I can make, I can check to see, because remember, um, each file is considered an object of the type of file class. It's kind of funny. So if I have a check to see the file name, does it exist? If it does exist, then I say, okay, file exists. I can check when it was created. I can check when it was last accessed. I can check uh, to see if it was uh, when it was last written to. Else, doesn't exist. All right, so these are all the things we can try. If I try and write this same stuff, let's try and do this thing together. I think it's good to practice this. Right, so we, we start off, let me take away the, the using.system.io. I'm going to take that away and see if I even need it. I'm going to start writing my, my file. Here's my file. Oh, man, I don't have my file here. What's going on? File dot, hmm, that's not cool, right? See how I don't have access to file? It doesn't exactly put using system.io in there for me, does it? Right? i got to do that on my own. So let's try that out. I'm just going to go kind of back up here. And put my using statement back. And now let's see if I can do that. All right, so I go back down here and say file. Ah, now I can see it. And I, if I put dot, I get all my methods. So you see, if I don't put this system.io, I don't have access to my file class or my directory class for that matter. If I go directory, right now I have access to it. If I take this away, I'm just going to put this in there like this. If I take this away and I start typing directory, right, I don't really have it. 
right? It's something else that comes up. This is not what I'm looking for. I need my directory class for my system.o. So again, first thing to do whenever we do file access is the using statement. Okay, if we don't have this piece in place, file IO will not work. Okay, so we need to put that in place. And I'm going to put that as a comment. So we need, need this in order to perform file IO. Input output. That's what IO stands for. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, let's write this thing. So again, I'm going to kind of ask, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of create a string. Um, I'm going to call it prompt in our particular case. Um, that's what it's going to be. And hey, I need that wait for key class again, eh? Holy crap, we keep on doing this over and over again. Isn't there an easy way to do that? Yes, there is. We explored that last time. I, I mean, I'll, if I have next, next time next week um, in class, and I don't have a lot of time today because I'm kind of going over two chapters yesterday and today. Otherwise, I would explore that as an aside. But here's my prompt as an example. And you know what? Just to make it quick, I'm going to go into my uh, GitHub files. I'm going to explore comp123 uh, lesson 8 part 1. And I'm going to go into my lesson here, go into my program.cs file, which is right here. And I'm going to grab that little class, right? Because, hey, I don't want to write this thing again, right? Here it is. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, when I sync up with you guys, you'll have it, right? So that way you don't have to write it again. Whoa, hey, you know, that's my little code snippet for today. How about that? So I'm going to save that thing. Um, right now I don't have anything except for a prompt, but for you guys to follow along, I'm just going to go into Team Explorer, press Home, and press Changes, and go, uh, you know, kind of added wait for key method. Okay, and commit. I'm going to go into home and go into changes, sorry, home and sync, and I'll sync up that so you guys have it on GitHub. So you have this wait for key. I need to have this because if I don't do wait for key, we won't be able to do our work, right? So let's just, I'll call wait for key, wait for, not wait for changes, wait for key, man. Wait for key. Okay, that's what it's going to do. It's going to wait for our key to come in, right? And we have this um, prompt that we're going to set up as a variable when we start pulling for a file. Okay, so we're going to say <clears throat> console.write line, good practice, you know, uh, please enter a file name. You need this, by the way, for your, uh, um, your assignment number five. So you need to know how to do this kind of stuff anyway. Please enter a file, make it a console.write instead of write line. And of course, I'm going to say prompt, right, is equal to console.readline. Okay, cool, cool, right? Console.readline, right? I don't have to convert it because I'm expecting a string to come in that's going to, that's going to be my file string, right? That's what I'm going to do, right? And now I'm going to check. I'm going to check to see if my file exists. And if you notice, there, this is the code. I want to, after I read my file in, it says, if file exists file name, this is checking to see if this is true, right? Then I'll check to see, I'll kind of, I'll put, put out the, the call. So let's try this out. If, and in brackets, file, right? And now remember, is it file exists or file dot exists? Right? It's a method. File dot exists. Right? The method is available to us because we use this system.io namespace. Otherwise we wouldn't have access to it. Right? And then the path to the file to check, right? Which is of course prompt. That's our prompt that's coming in from the console. Right? So if the file exists, what do we want to do? We want a console dot write line. You know, as an example. The file exists, right? Else, we'll make it simple. Here we go. Else, console.write line, file does not exist. Okay, really simple. So we're checking to see if a file exists. Also, you know, just for some padding. You know, I'm probably going to need a console uh, console.write line here. 
and you know, a blank one just to give it a little bit of space, one or the other, and then we're good to go. Let's check this out and see if it works, okay? Now, what file am I going to ask for? And where, by the way, is my path? Where do I start off from a path perspective? Yeah? Any ideas where I start from my path perspective? Huh? C drive. Okay, let's look at my C drive. I want to see if you're right. So I'm going to go to my C drive, and here's my C drive, which is almost full. Tell me which path should I ask for? Should I ask for boot manager? Um, Users, I can go with users. There's um, a dis desktop that I and I file. I could, right? I have to give the specific path, the answer is. If I don't give a specific path to the file, here's an example of that, where I say, enter the file name, file name exists or file name doesn't exist, right, as an example. It's going to look first here in your, names, in your own namespace, in your own backyard, so to speak, right? Let's test that. Let's make a file. So I'm going to go right-click. Yeah, this is part of your homework too, eh? Right click, <laughs> I'm going to go add, right? And I'm going to go new item. And it's going to look to see what kind of item do I want. It's going to say, hey, I got some different kinds of files, like classes, class diagram, interfaces, you know, all this got bitmap file, a code file, you know, a C sharp script, a cursor file, a data set, an icon file, an HTML page. I'll kind of, oh, hey, there's a text file. That's what I want, right? I click create a text file. And this text file I'm going to create, I'm going to call this, um, we'll call this my, my text file, right? Lowercase m. And it's going to be part of our same namespace. And you know what? I'm going to uh, start writing some stuff. This is some example text. Right? And so in my text file. If I actually look at the folder structure, again, you remember how to get to the folder structure. You right click on the project and it takes you to open folder in File Explorer, right? If you go there, it shows you the text file. Here's the actual text file. If I open it up with a regular editor, this is what it looks like. It's a regular text file. It can be opened up by a negative editor. It doesn't need a Visual Studio. Okay. So cool, cool. I have my text file locally, right? Um, let's try and, and run this thing and see what happens. First, I'll ask for my, my text file. My text file dot text is what it looks like. Let's try this out. So we'll start it off. Oh man, I gotta do this again. Okay, I'm gonna go into uh, uh, colors. I'm gonna change my color to white. And my screen text to black and my font just to make it easier for you guys to see. To console us, 20. I press OK. All right. So in here, I'm gonna say my my file is gonna be my text file dot text right, and press enter the file does not exist hold on but didn't I say that it should be here that my my text file dot text is searching here from my file but yet it doesn't exist how come well we'd like to think it works that way right but if I want a path to my file look how complicated this path is C, users, Tom, documents, GitHub, comp123, lesson 8, part 2, comp123, lesson 8, part 2, la 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 la. It's a big long path, right? What if I include all this stuff in my text file? Like, I mean, I put in my text file.txt. Hold on a second. I'm pretty sure that that's what I did, right? My text file.txt is right here. How come I can't access it, right? Or at least my code tells me I can't access it, right? If I go back to my example here, Right? And if I look at what, what the output is going to be, I say enter a file name document.txt, right? Enter a file name business letter.txt, right? And if you look at, they've got an example of uh, your, uh, uh, you're running file statistics. File statistics would be an actual, the actual uh, name of the code to run, right? And here's my, I'm checking to see if it exists. Well, mine doesn't exist, right? And it won't be able to give me a name of my file because I don't have the proper pathing to my file, even though I'm checking within my own code here, right? I can't seem to see this thing, is what I'm saying. I can't see my text file dot text. Do you see the same error? Right, you should get the same problem. We're gonna continue. And let's try out a different thing. Let's try out, if I was to put in my absolute path, which is kind of crazy, right? That I have to put my absolute path to my, 
for my uh, file. So here's my file name. And you know what? Just to go in here, I'm going to open up another little uh, prompt. I'm also going to go into my Solution Explorer, and I want to look and see what my pathing is. I'm going to go open folder in File Explorer. This is crazy, eh? And if you notice, here's my folder, and this is a long string of text. I'm going to kind of copy this, uh, copy my address as text, and I right-click to do that. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to my text file here, and I'm going to um, go CD space, right-click paste. Right, this is my path. Look how huge it is. Okay, let's see if I can see this thing in my directory path. There it is, using a dir command. Right. Oh, there's my my text file dot text is 28 bytes. I can see it. Right, no problem. I've got my my here's my long folder, my long path to the file. It's huge. Right. And I want to add in, after this path to the file, I want to add in uh, my, file, my text file dot text. So let's see if that is the answer. You know, theoretically, should be, right? Should be the answer to my file. Could this be the problem? So I'm going to put in right click, man, can I, can I even paste in here? Man, this sucks. So let me just go in here and just try this. Uh, I can't even write to this thing. I can't highlight. I can't mark. I can't do anything with this thing. So I'm going to kind of start typing stuff in. So C colon users, Tom, you do your own, right? C colon users. This is all documents, GitHub. That's where I put my stuff. Comp one, two, three, lesson. This is absolute path, right? Lesson eight, part, part two, right? I keep going. Um, comp one, two, three, lesson eight, part two, right? Slash my text file, right? My text file dot text. File does not exist. How come? Why am I getting this problem, guys? I'm putting it out to you here so they understand that what seems to be easy, right, can be quite challenging. At first, you're going to say to yourself, hey, I don't understand, right? How do I read and write to my files? Now, you've got plenty of help. You've got MSDN that you can always go to for help, and I recommend that. If you see something in the book that doesn't quite work out the way you think it should, uh, check it out. So also, am I doing something wrong is the other question you should always ask yourself. Am I doing something wrong here? Well, no, because my, I'm using this correctly because it's checking to see if my prompt here, this thing here, is checking to see if my file exists. And if you look and see the example, go back, right? we didn't do anything different than what I wrote in here. I said just called it file name. It's a string. I did a read line. I checked to see if it exists, right? Let's continue. We'll go back to this problem in a second. Again, these are the different... Um, ways of, uh, of setting up my files. These are the methods and classes that we talked about before, right? Here's an example, yes? Did you the file the whole system? I tried, okay. right? Here's another thing we can do. We can also check to see if a directory exists, right? A folder, if you will. That's what a directory is, it's a folder. So we can say enter a folder, here's my directory name, and then we can do a listing of files. Okay, we can try and do that, right? So we can say, here's, I'm using my system.io, again, I need to use that in my thing. And instead of us asking for a file name, we can ask for a, for a folder name, right? So does the folder exist? And if it exists, give me the directory structure. Uh, the directory exists and it contains the following. And here's my list of files. I can say files, right? I can do that, directory.getfiles, and here's my directory name. Well, if that's true, if I can do this, whatever the directory is, I mean, I can basically choose what my directory structure is, right? Let's use this as a, as a sense of how C Sharp sees stuff, because I think it's important for us to explore this, this possibility. So first, I want to see if my directory exists, and then what's inside of it. I think this is a really good um, little piece of code here to check out, to try it yourself kind of thing. So here's my file exists. Let's not do this. Let's change my uh, thing to enter a directory name. Actually, we'll call it enter a folder name. 
it. So that's really what we like to hear, right? And then we're going to say if directory directory exists, prompt, right? The directory exists. Here's directory exists, right? And the file does not, or the directory, directory does not exist, right? One of those two. Again, pathing is very important. Right, so if you look back at the pathing example that they gave us at the beginning of the book, beginning of this chapter, I'm just going to go back, back, back. Right, here's our, an example of our path, C colon forward slash. Right, is this how we write our pathing when it comes to our data? Well, let's take a look at that. If I go back here and I go to my command prompt, right, I have this C colon if I go to you know cd c colon backslash right, it's going to take me to my you know the original uh, folder here, and if I go and do a directory, it's going to show me all these piece parts, so all these other folders and directories that are part of my c colon backslash. So theoretically, if I put in c colon backslash, we should get this right. Huh? Let's check it out. Do we get that? So first we see if the directory exists, and if it does. We'll say console dot right line the folder I should say contains we're gonna we're gonna kind of check out that same uh, thing here folder instead of directory I don't like directory as a name because it's kind of an older name for what we do right so that's one thing let's go back to what we saw here right because we did this um, checking we create a oh oh god another array are you kidding me? Am I hitting you guys with arrays again? String, a list of files, right, is my is my string array, right? So let's try that out. So I'm gonna create a string array. String array, list of files. That's what it is, right? That's the first thing I gotta do. String array is a list of files. I haven't instantiated the string array yet. Um, and I'm gonna read it in. I'm gonna say list of files equals, I'm gonna get directory, I'm gonna use the directory dot get files with my directory name, which is my prompt in my case, and I'm gonna run through a loop, that's what this is gonna do, to do a console dot write line of all of the list of files. Okay? So list of files, we're gonna assign it to whatever I'm getting in, right, from my directory dot get files method. Okay. That's cool, cool. So let's go back here, and I'll do that here, inside here. I'll say um, list of files is equal to my directory dot get files method, and I'm going to put in where my string path, this is important, my string path is going to be my prompt, right? So because I know it exists, if my directory exists, it's going to say, hey, here's my list of files, all right? And then what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to do a for loop in here, right? Here's my for loop. Now, this is interesting. If you notice what we've done here, we've given a for loop, right, from zero to the length of the file list, and then I'm incre incrementing my list. Is there a better way of doing it? Have you guys learned for each? Yeah? Wouldn't for each be good? I mean, we are going through a list of items. But for now, let's leave it as is. Int i is equal to zero. We'll say index instead of uh, um, index is equal to zero. I hate using i's and x's and y's, right? Where index is less than list of files dot length, right? Um, index plus plus. Okay, and of course I'm going to put I'm going to wrap it in a code block, and from there I'm going to go console dot right line. And then I'm going to kind of put together a um, list of files here. So list of files, and I'm going to kind of generate the index. Based on the index, I'm going to kind of write out whatever the list of files are that I'm going to generate from my folder. Okay? If all goes well, I should be reading from my directory, no problem. Right? Because this is the way it goes. List of files, directory, I'm going to get files. I'm going to go do a for loop. I'm going to print it out. One thing I probably do need is some kind of separator to make it look nice. Console.write line. And we'll just use a bunch of little separators here like this, just like we normally do for separation. It's really just a console trick. I'm also going to give us another little console.write line just for spacing purposes. Okay, cool. Let's try it out, see if this works. 
running it, enter a folder name. Okay. C colon backslash. Folder exists. And the folder contains boot manager boot nxt msdia 80dll my page file that says my swap file that says hold on a second where's my directories where are all the other directories how come i'm not showing those things well because we didn't do that right we didn't put in my directories we asked for files list of files right could there be a list of folders or directories let's try that out we'll make a new string here string list of folders right and we'll see if we can do the same thing we'll say list of files is here right and we'll do a we'll just copy this little loop here we'll kind of separate our files and folders which is kind of weird right and actually we'll make it so that the, the this thing here we'll do directories first or so folders first right and then um, we'll say list of folders, right? And instead of the get files method, right? Let's see if we can do get. We have directories, directories method, right? Get directories method, right? And then in here, of course, we're going to replace list of folders in here instead of list of files, and that's what's going to be. That's what's going to be in here instead, right? So list of folders. It says, hold on, how come I'm getting this error list of files? Well, because we replaced it, of course, somehow. Let's just undo, 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 undo. List of files, list of folders. What I wanted, I think I just replaced it by accident. Sorry about that. There we go. Yeah, that's wrong too. Yeah? So we're going to list our folders first, if everything goes well. And we're going to list our files afterwards. Let me put a little separation in there between the two. Console.writeline, right? To kind of separate the two things between. Makes sense. And let's run this puppy. So C colon backslash boom. Right? So we get our list of folders. Right? Data, documents and settings, INET pub, all these things here, right? And our boot manager, here's our files. If I want it to be really nice and separate it nicely. So I can list these things for sure. This is kind of a good thing, so we can understand what our list of files and folders are. So I'm going to say console dot right line. Let's why not? We'll call this, you know, folders. Making our own little program, right? Our own little directory listing program. Console dot right line files, and then let's run that again. So we'll see, colon, backslash, enter. Okay, folders are here, right? Bunch of folders, bunch of files. These are folders and files on my hard drive. Yours will look obviously different, right, potentially. Okay, but what if I do another path? So I've done this path, but I want to try something else. Let's go into our folder name and go C, colon, backslash, users. Our folder exists. The folder contains folders and files. C colon backslash users. I like that. Okay, well, I know if that exists, right, um, I can do this no problem. I can look at my desktop.ini file, C colon backslash users. Desktop.ini would be my file that I want to look at. Oh man, let's do that read line, that file read line thing again. So here I do my directory list. I look at my directory, and down here, I want to prompt the person again for, uh, for my, uh, my file. So here's my folder name. As an example, this is my console.write. Please enter a folder name, and then I do a folder listing. That's what I'm doing here, right? Wouldn't it be nice if we could separate this into a nice method 
right? So we can actually go and ask for the folder name over and over again. Maybe by making a menu, all oh, those dreaded menus. Let's do this together, right? Guys, this is stuff you can use with your assignment, right? Okay, so I'm going to take all this crap here. This, all this stuff right here. Everything. I'm going to go through the entire thing except for my wait for key, right? This whole bit of code here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go refactor. I'm going to go extract method. Okay, and I'm going to call this what? Um, we'll call this list folders, right? Or list folder. We'll call it list folder method. Press OK. All right, so here's my list folder method in main. And here's my list folder method right here. So this is one thing I want to do, right? Let us, now we can list our folders, but I want to create, now that I have this list folder method, I can always list my folder over and over again. I can call this whole prompt. These are all local variables here that don't exist in the global scope, right? So I can go through here and they'll be uh, created and destroyed within this list folder scope, right? So these, 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 fo these uh, uh, variables, prompt, list of files, list of folders, all this kind of stuff here, right? It, it won't clash if I do it again in another method, right? Theoretically. So if that's true, let us make a copy of this private static void list folder method, right? So I kind of copy the whole thing again, just because I'm a lazy typer. Woof, am I ever lazy, right? So I go at the top here, right? I copy the whole thing. It's going to give me an error because it's going to say, hey, it's got the same thing twice. So we're not going to say list folder we're going to say, um, you know, we're going to check to see if the file exists, right? So we're going to say check, we're going to call this check file, right? So it's my check file method, and I'm going to put this in here as well. So I'm going to go check file. I'm going to use this thing. So I'm going to note it here. This is just, I'll make a note here, you know, to be used in a second, <laughs> right? Just so you understand what I'm doing here. Okay, so... Um, Here's my check file. Obviously, I want a prompt. I've got my list of files and list of folders. Don't need these two things, right? Because in my check file, I do need this please enter folder name. So I'm kind of making this so that I do less work. That's why I've got this structure. Might as well. It's almost like what I need, right? So please enter a file name, right? It's going to check the file name. It's going to look at this read line, console.write.write line. It's going to say if file exists, right? We're going to do this whole thing again. And we're going to say the file exists, right? And we're not going to do this folder contain stuff because we don't need any of this stuff for now, right? We're just going to kind of X out of this. And the file does not exist like we had before, right? So that's kind of sums up what we did before in a nutshell. Check to see if the file exists. And if it does, we kind of say it does, right? Let's do this again, right? Okay, here we are. We have our little... Uh, our list folder, let's create our, I'm going to make some space here to create our menu. Now in order for it to create our menu, we've got to check to see if we want to continue, right? So we've got to provide almost like a choice or a selection, right? I'm going to make the selection an integer. So I'm going to say int, this is our way we create a menu, all right? Creating a menu 101. Take a look at this file if you need to create a menu in the future on an exam, all right? So int, we'll call this selection. Right? Here's my selection. I'm going to set my selection to zero when we start off. All right? My selection is zero. And while, while, here's my while loop. Remember I said you must use a while loop. If while selection, right, is uh, equal to zero, right, that's what we're checking. While it's equal to zero, right? Or we can say while selection is not equal to three, right? Because we're going to make a few, uh, few options here, right? Both are fine. Both ways are good. So when we check it, if we change the selection, right, it'll it'll kind of it'll drop out, right? But while selection is not equal to three, now we're going to do a switch statement. We're going to switch. Here's my internal switch statement. Selection. This is what you could have done in your exam really quickly. And inside of here, we're going to kind of put a switch statement, and we're going to say case one. Break. We're going to kind of put together our, our uh, case statement. I'm just kind of outlining it for now, right? Really quickly. Case two, you know, case three. And, you know, we'll probably need the default case just in case the user enters something weird, right? Default. And here's our break statement. Okay, so some default stuff. 
We good so far? So case one, I haven't put anything in there. I'm just outlining my stuff, right? So here's my my selection is, is zero. I check to see this as well. My selection variable is not equal to three. I'm checking the three. So this must be my exit condition, right? Um, one and two would be, be my two choices. Well, in my while loop, this is my switch statement to do stuff, but I actually got to tell the user stuff every time I open up my menu. So here's my menu command. So I'm going to say console dot right line, you know, kind of open up some kind of create a menu. Let's do this nicely. Huh? What do you think? Console dot right line. Right lines are free, right? I'm going to kind of put a bunch of bunch of blank spaces here to prettify my stuff. Eh? Look how beautiful that is. Menu. <laughs> All right. And you know what? Just because I'm lazy, I'll just take this whole line here and copy it and paste it in there. And we'll, we'll add a one in there. I'll actually add some stuff. One, right? Uh, check. Check if file exists, right? And I get all these extra spaces I'm going to get rid of, right? So it looks like a real menu, okay? And two, right? <clears throat> uh, folder list listing, right? Which is what we're going to do here, and we'll make it three exit. Uh, for now, just because we're simpletons in our way of doing these menus. Exit. Nice and easy. Hey, I got a couple of these other things here. I got a blank space that I created. And let's put that together and maybe some kind of other closing thing here. I'm creating my menu, right? Oh, God. Beauty, huh? Huh? Isn't it beautiful? I'm going to check my file, right? How difficult is this to do? Okay, here's where I'm actually going to check if it's one, two, or three. And look, we got some stuff down here. If it's one, I want to check my file, right? So I'm going to cut this out. This is where I was going to use it. So here's my one. I'm going to call my check file method, right? If it's two, right, I want to list my folder, right? Here's my folder. Right? And if it's three, well, it's three. It's going to break out. And if it's something else, I want to say to the user, <clears throat> console.writeline, you know, something like incorrect entry, please try again. Okay, that's interesting. That's like almost like a it almost feels to me like this default case is like a try catch. Huh. Who would have thought? Yes? This is a loop. Well, we do. We, this is part of the loop. Look, if I incorrect, it'll loop again. The selection won't be three, right? It'll be something else. The only time it'll break is if it's this, right? So we'll just do a console here for just, just a, for posterity. We'll do a console dot right line with nothing in it, just to give us a little bit of space, right? And we'll do the same thing here because, you know, we want a, a little space console dot right line. And we'll do the same thing here just to make sure we pad it up a little bit. We can pad this up as nicely as possible. Hey, man, this is becoming a little unruly here, eh? Well, we've done our menu, but we need to read our menu, huh? So let's, let's instantiate a new object, a new variable called, guess what? Prompt. Uh, our prompt object here. But our prompt object in this case is going to be, we're going to say prompt, right? Uh, or maybe we'll do a console, sorry, console.write, not write line, a console.write, uh, please <clears throat> make your selection, right? Here's please make your selection, and then we're going to go prompt is equal to, we're going to convert it to a, a number. So we're going to say, what? Convert dot two, and then int 32 is what we want, right? And what is it going to be? Uh, console dot 
read line. Right? Make your selection. That's what it's going to do. Right? Make your selection. Convert to 32. Hey, how come it's giving me an error? What did I do wrong? This is bad, right? So this should be int, right? Could be selection, eh? Could be selection, because that would be the proper thing. Do I need a prompt if I got this selection already? No. Right? So let's get rid of this. But I like the idea. I'm trying to give you the same pattern, right? So this should be selection. Very good that you guys caught that. And of course, we need to use the same variable to switch through, or else we won't know what the hell we're doing, right? This is great, but the user could put all kinds of stuff in here, man. This is bad, right? Well, hold on. Let's wait off on this try catch block. So try catch block is like crazy, right? If we put it around this, it's going to make you more confused. First, let's check to see if my menu works, right? So I'm going to just take away some of these spaces, clean up this code, go into GitHub, share it all with you guys. I'm going to choose this wait for key thing is going to be outside of the menu because that's when everything is done, right? Okay, cool, cool. Here's my wait for key. Here's my menu. And you know what? When it comes back to here into my menu again, every time I'm done my menu, I'm out of my menu, you know what I want to do? Um, after my wait for key is done, right? Because my, my wait for key is going to happen um, outside of my loop. So that's going to happen at the end of my code. But every time I go back and do my menu again, I want to do at the bottom of my loop here, I want to do a console dot clear. Right? And this clears the screen. Clears the screen. Sorry, I'll put this up so you can see it. Console.clear. Right? So here's the pattern for you that I'm giving you, right? For a menu. Very, very simple menu pattern, right? And what this does, of course, is is give us the ability to loop. Okay, let's check it. Let's 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 try this out before we move on. I'm gonna run it, right? Here's my menu. Ah, eh? my menu. Ah, what a beautiful menu I made. Huh? Okay, and you know what? Because console.writeline is free, it looks beautiful. You can make this nicer, by the way, with different kind of ASCII codes. Instead of pluses, you can use equal signs. You can use dashes. You can use underlines. You can make it as nice as you want. Okay, let's choose three for exit first to see if it works. Okay, we do. We exit and we get out of here. That's good. Let's try this out. Okay, let's try one to check that the file exists. We're going to say, right? How about star? If we put a star, like a pattern, like star dot star. Oh man, that didn't work. That didn't work, man. Star dot star didn't work. Kind of exited out. What if we just put something else? Like uh, we could have put a my text file dot text. We checked that out last time. It didn't work, right? Oh man, what happened? Because I didn't actually enter in the proper thing. Let's try this again. So I want to go and do my if file exists, right? Check for my file name. My file name is my text file dot text right and nothing came back didn't even go there okay how about two uh, folder name I'm gonna go C colon backslash and oh it's gone how come well we need to do this wait for key don't we right well this is the great thing about this we can call this wait for key function anytime we want so we can do this obviously at the bottom of my check files so we'll do in each function, we'll do this wait for key over and over again. This is where we reuse our code, right? So when we call a function, we wait for key, right? And instead of, you know, please press any key to exit, which we have in our wait for key, let's change this message so it says, please press any key to continue. Because whether you continue, whether you exit the program or continue, continue, it's more of a uh, overall kind of thing. We also have a clear in here for my wait for key. So maybe I don't need the clear inside my my code. We'll check that in a second. We, we might have some duplication here. So I have this console clear command in here. We may not need that. We have a wait for key here at the end when we do stuff. We also have a wait for key here. I might as well put a wait for key at the bottom of this. Let's see if we do this. See if we can reduce when we use. Wait for key. Try it again. All right, so go in here again, run it, uh, check to see if a folder exists. We'll put in C colon backslash enter. Hey, I'm good. I got my folder. Press any key, go back to the menu, right? I'm going to check to see if a file exists now. File, my text file dot text. File does not exist. I get a message at least. Enter key three, 
exits, right? Okay. Now, you know what? I'm not comfortable with my, um, because it's already waiting, right? Um, as an example, maybe when I press exit in my loop, which is way up here, maybe I don't need to wait for key at the end, because I do it twice, right? So maybe I don't need to do this. Let's try that and see how it works when I exit. Just from a clarity perspective, I'm just, you know, reducing and reusing my code. So if I go three exit, it exits, which is what I want. I don't want it to say, please press any key to exit. I got my menu to do that, right? The only time I want to press my key to continue is if I'm making another selection. So I've got a working menu. I'm going to pause the movie here while I continue, but there's some things that I got to fix and figure out, right? So I'm going to go to Team Explorer. I'm going to go to Home. I'm going to go to Changes. I'm going to say Added Menu. <coughs> added test uh, text file. Those are two things I did. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to unsync commits and press sync. Okay, and I'm going to go and back to my files here and I'll stop recording this one and we'll continue after.